As I walked through the front door, the comforting familiarity of my dad's house embraced me. The chime of the grandfather clock in the hallway, the worn-out rug I used to sit on as a kid, and the fragrance of jasmine from the garden all made me feel right at home. But, as I set down my school bag, a muffled voice caught my attention. Tiptoeing closer to the living room, I recognized Clara's voice, conversing in hushed tones on the phone. You wouldn't believe what she did. And Emily has no idea. Her mother had such a twisted mind. My heart raced, and I strained to hear more. But Clara changed the topic swiftly, only allowing me to catch bits and pieces about my mom. Later, as we sat around the dinner table, Clara remarked, You know, Emily, some people just aren't built for motherhood. They make choices that can hurt their children without even realizing. I frowned, pushing the mashed potatoes around on my plate. What do you mean? She took a sip of her wine, feigning innocence. Oh, just a general observation. But, you know, it's essential to know the true nature of people close to us, for our sake. The weight in my chest grew heavier. That night, my dreams were clouded with jumbled memories and hazy faces. My mom's face appeared, distorted and distant. Was it my own mind playing tricks, or was it the seeds of doubt Clara was planting? The next morning, after a restless sleep, I found a beautifully wrapped box on my study table with a note. Thought you should have this. Clara. Eagerly, I unwrapped it. Inside was a diary, worn with age. As I flipped through, I recognized my mom's handwriting. But what was written sent my head spinning. Had to lie again. If Emily knew, she'd never look at me the same way. Tears welled up in my eyes. I felt like I was standing at the edge of a chasm, the ground beneath me collapsing. What were these entries? Were they truly penned by my mom? And why had Clara decided to give this to me now? It was then that I made up my mind. I needed to uncover the truth, whatever it was. Whether it was a dark chapter from my mom's past, or another of Clara's twisted games, I had to know. Walking through the crowded school hallway, my head buzzed with the whirlwind of emotions from the last 24 hours. The diary's revelations weighed on me, but I couldn't keep it bottled up any longer. Finding Zoe at her locker... I pulled her to our secret spot behind the bleachers, out of earshot from everyone. Zoe, you won't believe what Clara gave me. I quickly recounted the discovery of the diary, watching as her eyes widened with every detail. Those entries. Are you sure they're real? I don't know what to believe anymore. Emily, you can't just take this at face value. You know Clara. She's crafty. Before you jump to any conclusions, you need to talk to your mom. Get her side of the story. Nodding, I knew Zoe was right. But how? If Dad or Clara finds out, there'll be hell to pay. We'll figure something out. Maybe meet her somewhere discreet. A plan began forming in my mind. The old cafe? The one Mom and I used to go to? That's perfect. It's neutral ground. With Zoe's encouragement, I sent a discreet text to my mom, and we planned to meet the next evening. The cafe's familiar jingle greeted me as I pushed open the door. The aroma of freshly ground coffee enveloped me, momentarily pushing away my anxieties. My mom sat at our usual corner booth, her face etched with concern. Seeing her, memories flooded back. A younger, more vibrant Clara, laughing with my mom at a family gathering. They seemed inseparable. What had gone so wrong? Taking a deep breath, I slid into the seat opposite her. Mom, I... I found something, and I don't know what to make of it. She tilted her head, her eyes searching mine. What is it, sweetie? Hesitating, I handed her the diary. Watching her face for any sign of recognition, I said, Clara gave it to me. She scanned the pages, her face slowly turning pale. These, Emily, these aren't my words. But it's your handwriting. It looks like it, but I never wrote these things. Then how did Clara have them? Why would she give it to me? My mom took a deep breath, pain evident in her eyes. There's a lot you don't know about Claire and me. We used to be close, very close, but something happened. What? I can't tell you, not now. But promise me, don't take everything at face value. Look deeper. Leaving the cafe, my head was spinning. Who was telling the truth? How did the diary come into Clara's possession? What was the secret my mom was hiding? Determined to get to the bottom of this, I decided to dig deeper into the past. The next step? 
talking to the old family friends and relatives who'd been there during Clara's and Mom's close friendship days. If anyone had answers, they did. Zoe and I arrived at my maternal grandmother's quaint cottage, the scent of fresh roses and old books filling the air. As soon as we entered, Grandma greeted us with a hug and her signature lemonade. Gran, I've been trying to understand the past, mainly about Mom and Clara. A shadow crossed her face. Why the sudden interest? I found this diary, supposedly belonging to Mom, with entries that just don't sound like her. Grandma took the diary, flipping through its pages. This isn't your mother's. I know her writing, and something about this feels off. She led us to the attic, where we stumbled upon dusty photo albums and stacks of old letters. As we dug deeper, a picture emerged that was vastly different from Clara's tales. There's a letter here, dated just a week before the one in the diary. Mom's writing about a family picnic, how happy everyone was, but the diary mentions a fight. It doesn't make sense, Zoe muttered. Grandma sighed. I always found Clara to be a bit odd, but I never imagined she'd go this far. Determined to get more answers, we decided to visit Clara's former workplace. One of her ex-colleagues, Marcia, agreed to meet with us. You're asking about Clara? Oh boy, where do I begin? She was known for her schemes, got ahead by manipulating situations and even documents, lost her job because of it. This revelation was like a punch in the gut. Do you think she could have... I don't know. Faked a diary? Marcia raised an eyebrow. Faking something of sentimental value to manipulate someone? Sounds exactly like something she'd do. My resolve hardened. Zoe and I needed one last piece of concrete evidence. That night, while Clara was out, we sneaked into her room. Look for anything unusual. Hidden compartments. Anything. After minutes that felt like hours, my hand brushed against something behind her closet wall. A hidden compartment. Inside was a box filled with drafts of manipulated diary pages, pens, handwriting practice sheets, and even photos of my mom with sections marked out. I knew it, I whispered. We need to show this to your dad. Returning home, I waited for the right moment. When dad came in, I took a deep breath. Dad, there's something you need to see. Laying out the evidence, I watched as his face turned from confusion to shock. This can't be right. Clara wouldn't. She did. She's been manipulating all of us. He looked defeated. I can't believe I let this happen. We sat in silence, the weight of deception hanging in the air. But amid the betrayal, there was a glimmer of hope, a daughter reclaiming her truth, and a father finally seeing the light. The morning sun streamed through the windows as I approached the school. Zoe, along with a group of my friends, huddled around our usual hangout spot, their faces alight with a mixture of excitement and apprehension. I can't believe you're going through with this, Zoe whispered, linking her arm with mine. I have to. Everyone needs to know the truth, not just for me, but for my mom, my dad, everyone Clara's lied to. One by one, my friends voiced their support. It was heartening to know I wasn't alone in this. The next few days were a blur of preparations. I sent out invites for a family gathering at Dad's house, ensuring that all the key players in this twisted saga would be present. The day arrived with an electric atmosphere. Relatives chatted, the aroma of delicious food wafted from the kitchen, and soft music played in the background. Clara pranced around, playing the gracious host, unaware of the storm brewing. As dessert was served, I stood up, my heart pounding in my ears. I'd like to share something with everyone. A hush fell over the room. I played the pre-recorded message, Clara's voice echoing through the hall, admitting her schemes. I just changed some things in the diary, made it seem like her mom was the bad guy. Emily would never know. The room was in stunned silence. The damning evidence, the drafts, the handwriting practices, and the marked photos were displayed on a table. Clara's face turned an ashen hue. This, this isn't what it looks like. Oh, isn't it? I retorted. You've spun a web of lies. And for what? To drive a wedge between a daughter and her mother? Emily, you have to understand. I did it for us. For our family. Our family? You mean the one you tried to tear apart with your deceit? My voice cracked with emotion. Relatives whispered amongst themselves, their faces a mix of shock and disgust. Uncle Martin shook his head. I always knew there was something off about her. My dad stood up, his face pale. All this time, Clara. 
All the lies, the manipulation. Was any of it real? She faltered. I... I just wanted to be loved. To have a family. I thought this was the only way. You had our love, and you squandered it with your lies. My dad's voice trembled with pain. As the truth unraveled, the chasm between Clara and the family she so desperately sought to be a part of grew wider. But amidst the chaos and betrayal, there was also a sense of catharsis. The truth had finally come to light, and the shadows of deceit had been banished. The next few weeks were a whirlwind. News about Clara's deceit spread like wildfire. Neighbors, friends, even acquaintances at the grocery store whispered in hushed tones. They couldn't believe the extent of her treachery. One evening, as I was settling into my room at my mom's apartment, there was a knock on the door. It was Dad. He stood there looking older and more defeated than I'd ever seen him. I... I heard you moved in with your mom. I sighed. Dad, after everything that's happened. No, I get it. I should have seen through Clara. I should have protected you. It's not just about protection. It's about trust. And right now I need some time. A long pause filled the space between us. Then he said, I'm sorry, Emily. Truly. I'm seeking therapy, trying to understand how I got so blinded. But I want you to know, if you ever need anything, I'm here. Thank you, Dad. I hope you find the healing you need. Days turned into weeks. Mom and I began to rebuild our relationship, reminiscing about old times and sharing new memories. One afternoon, as we strolled in the park, she wrapped her arm around my shoulder. You've grown so strong, Emily. Facing all this, standing up for the truth. I had to, Mom. I couldn't let Clara's lies define us. You know, in a twisted way, all this brought us closer. It's as if we've rediscovered each other. I smiled. It did, and I'm grateful for that. One day, as I settled in my favorite corner of the house, I started penning down my experiences. A new diary, a fresh start. I wrote about the pain, the betrayal, the moments of doubt, but also about love, resilience, and the strength that comes from facing adversity. Dear Diary, the last few months have been a tumultuous journey, from doubting the very core of my relationships to finding strength in truth. It's said that every experience, good or bad, shapes you. Today, as I write this, I emerge not as a victim, but as a survivor, stronger, wiser, and more resilient. And with that, I close the diary, leaving behind the shadows of Clara's deceit and stepping into a future filled with promise and hope. Did Emily make the right choice by choosing to stay with her mom after everything was revealed? Or should she have given her dad a chance to make amends immediately? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to OSA, our stories animated for more deep and engaging tales.